Welcome to Zeta Plus 2, Fast Approach by Streamworks Audio. I'm your host, Walt Honeycutt. Over the next hour, the Streamworks team and I will help you get up and running quickly with Zeta Plus 2. First, we'll go on a quick tour of Zeta, then get into the functionality of each section. Now, Cakewalk made my job as instructor really easy because they made Zeta really straightforward. You basically have two screens and some submenus. This is the default view. It's what you'll see when Zeta launches. At the top are buttons to switch between synth view and effects view, and we'll get into both of those in just a moment. Zeta refers to each different sound that it produces as a program, and over to the right is where you load programs. Now you see the dice icon? This is a novel feature. If you want, Zeta will pick a program at random for you. Just click on the dice and see what you get. The next three columns let you select which program to load. Start by choosing a bank, then the type, and finally the program. Now, if I open the bank menu, you can see that I have options for the new factory content and the classic Zeta content. Next is the type column, which is self-explanatory, and there are some cool options here. The showcase is a collection of Cakewalk's best stuff, and this is a great sound bank to start experimenting with. The selection for ARPS is cool. ARPS is short for arpeggiators, and if you're looking for programs with a lot of movement, this gives you a lot of choices. Simulations is where you'll find realistic sounds that are meant to mimic acoustic instruments. And finally, you have sequences. These programs have built-in patterns and rhythms. After you select a bank, you can step through the programs using the arrow keys, or click on the name, and you'll see all the programs at once. And some of them have hints built into their names, like the letters MW or PB, which are meant to suggest that you try the mod wheel or pitch bender with this program. And way over to the right is the program menu. Now, a program menu might not sound all that exciting. There's some very cool stuff here. First, you have the option to initialize Zeta if you want to start building something from scratch. But you also have the ability to copy and paste programs to create your own versions. Check this out. You can copy and paste parts of a program. So let's say you find a preset with an awesome set of distortion effects and you want to use that same setup in another program. Well, rather than reprogramming it all from scratch, select Copy, then switch to the program that you want to modify, then select Paste Special. And in this case, we would want to pick out the option for effects. From here, you can pick out which effect or all of the effects to paste. The same goes for synth parameters. I can Select a program, select Copy, then select another program where I want to add these things, then select Paste Special. Back on the synth page are five unique sections. The oscillator, where your sound begins, the filter that gives your sound its sonic texture, the envelope generator that shapes the sound over time, the low frequency oscillator, which provides a source of timing information for all kinds of stuff that we'll get into later, and then the modulation matrix, which introduces all kinds of movement. There's also a miniature keyboard along the bottom and a master section. Now, these last two areas, the master section and keyboard, are available on both the synth page and the effects page. Now, when you switch over to the effects page, probably the first thing you notice is the central routing matrix. And this is where you turn the effects on and off and where you put them in a specific order. Then around the matrix are the individual effects, which include distortion, that's self-explanatory, compression for volume shaping, reverb for ambience, EQ for tone control, modulation, which really just means chorusing, and delay for echo. And again, you can see the master section and the keyboard. Okay, let's flip back to the synth screen. Now, the simplest thing to explain is the miniature keyboard. This device is just what it looks like. You can click on it to trigger Zeta if you don't have a MIDI device hooked up. And where you click on the key will control the velocity value. And if you want to, go into the Options menu and you can hide it. The master section in the corner is a really cool feature. 
because it displays data about whatever control you're using at the moment. So as I move the mouse around and I adjust different parameters, the master section gives me detailed information about each control that I touch. The master section also gives you the ability to adjust tuning. You can adjust the transpose setting and the polyphony, which is just the maximum number of voices. You also have the master level control, volume meters, and a limiter. The limiter just prevents your audio system from overloading. Okay, let me show you just a couple of cool things with the controls, and then we'll jump into editing some sounds. You basically have four kinds of controls in Zeta. Faders, knobs, selectors, and range controls. There are actually two kinds of faders, unipolar or one-way, and that's for controlling stuff which has a minimum to maximum application, like volume. Then you have bipolar or centering faders for things like filter balance. All the faders are inertia-driven, which means they will not jump to a new value if you click along the length of the fader. Instead, you must click and drag them. Now, if you click a fader once, you'll see a blue light come on. That means that it's in focus. Now, you can move the wheel on your mouse or an arrow key on your keyboard and control the same fader. And if you're using arrow keys, the vertical keys move the control by medium amounts, the horizontal keys move it by smaller amounts for fine adjustments, and the page up and page down controls make it jump in large increments. If you double click a fader, it resets to its default position. The knobs work about the same way as the faders. The only catch is that you have to click and drag vertically, not in a circle. Just like a fader, once a knob is selected, it's in focus. The little blue light comes on, and now you can use your mouse wheel or the arrow keys to control it. Knobs will also reset to their default value if you double click them. You can connect any knob or fader to your hardware controller by right clicking and selecting. MIDI Learn. Then, move the hardware control you want to use, and the two are automatically connected. Okay, just a couple of more notes on controls. You also have selectors. These are the little triangles, and they come in two flavors, single and double. Now, if you click on a single arrow, you get a menu full of options. If you click on a double arrow, nothing happens. With a double arrow, you have to click on the name next to it. You left click to make the value go up, right click to make the value go down. If you keep clicking long enough, it'll wrap around and come back to the beginning. With a double arrow selector, you have the option to click both mouse buttons at once, and it'll reset to its default value. The last control type are range selectors. You can use the left or the right mouse button, then click and drag to adjust their endpoints. Okay, with all that in mind, let's move on to the next chapter and start working with sound.